Hello, Charlotte. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. So in, we first uh, talk in today uh, is a tool for machine learning based on the asymmetric map approach in Grass GIS and Charlotte Fraser. I think this is a good phrase. Uh, Charlotte is a research at the Université Libre de Bruxelles, Belgium, uh, with a background in geography, like me, uh, and uh, specializing in remote sensing and GIS. So, Charlotte, the stage is all yours for your presentation. Thanks. Thank you very much. So, hi, good morning, everyone, or good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you are. And thank you for coming to my talk. So as just mentioned, uh, I will talk about a tool for machine learning based decimetric mapping approaches in GRASS-GIS. So and the tool specifically is called R Area Create Weight. So first, let's have a bit of context. In recent decades, there has been significant progress in high resolution Earth observation data which enables geospatial data to be available at increasing resolutions. This in turn drives the analysis of spatial data at higher resolutions. So socioeconomic and demographic data, however, while it's collected, uh, generally speaking, at the individual or household level, tends to be aggregated at coarser scales, such as the administrative unit, which of course is too coarse for high resolution spatial analysis. This leads us to spatially disaggregate data to finer resolutions. So often data is disaggregated uniformly, but in the case of human population mapping, for example, this is unlikely to represent the spatial heterogeneity of human activity. So as such, interest has grown in dasymmetric mapping, which is an approach used to disaggregate data non-uniformly from a coarse spatial resolution to a finer level of detail. It assumes that knowledge of an area or proxy indicators can be used to produce weights at a higher spatial resolution to unequally spatially disaggregate or reallocate the data and therefore create a more realistic, finer scale, gridded layer of disaggregated data, for example, population data. In GRASS GIS, there is already an add-on called V Area Way, which carries out decimetric mapping, so which disaggregates data from a core scale to a finer scale using weights. But while this tool is very handy, the user has to provide a pre-prepared weighted layer, which brings us to the question, how can we determine these weights? So determining these weights based on a set of ancillary geo-information data can be quite a challenge. Here I'll take the example of human population counts. Uh, for human population counts, often land cover and land use maps are typically used. But often the weights are subjectively determined by an expert who will attribute higher weights to urban areas slightly lower weights to suburban or rural areas and a weight of zero for forest areas or water bodies because this corresponds to our understanding that more people are found in urban areas than they are in forests. Of course for other variables for example if you are mapping populations of wild animals uh, you would be more likely to inverse this weighting. More recently, however, research has taken advantage of the power and the efficiency of machine learning algorithms to create weighting layers for decimetric mapping without any a priori knowledge. For example, the World Pop project, and this project works with population mapping. Uh, the World Pop project developed an approach that uses the random forest algorithm as a flexible means to predict the weights for reallocation of population into grid layers. And this has been found to improve upon existing freely available population mapping approaches. 
So a similar approach to that of WorldPop was developed by Gripa et al. Now the references can be found in the publication that uh, comes with this talk. Uh, and uh, this approach also uses the random forest algorithm to create a weighted layer. While the code is openly and freely accessible, which allows the approach to be reproduced, but it was designed for specific experiments and this may not fit the needs of other scientists. So furthermore, it requires an understanding of computer code and computer languages, in this case, Python and R, which makes the code less accessible to non-programmer users. So part of this code or part of this approach has already been implemented in the GRASS GIS add-on R zonal classes. And this consists of the zonal extraction of class proportions from categorical raster data. I'll come back to this uh, a bit later. But more uh, needed to be done to make the rest of the approach more generalized, to be able to apply in more cases, and to make it more accessible to more users. And so this is why uh, another add-on was developed. And this is where we get to the R area create weight add-on. So this tool uses random forest regressor algorithm to create a weighted layer which can be used for decimetric mapping. So it's a ready to use tool that is accessible to non-programmer users via GRASS GIS. So how does it work? Well, of course, the user does have to provide some data sets. After pre-processing of these data sets, the tool will calculate statistics on the data sets. Now, the statistics are calculated at two different levels. They're on one hand calculated at the level of each spatial unit. This could be, for example, uh, administrative units, uh, and there's the core scale. So this is the information that is used to train the random forest model. Uh, the statistics are also calculated at the level of the output higher resolution grid. So for each pixel of the output grid. And these grid level statistics are then used within the random forest model that has been trained to predict weights at the grid level and therefore create a weighted layer, which can then be input, um, which can then be input uh, for dasymmetric mapping. So in more detail, in its simplest form, the add-on requires three different types of input information. On one hand, you need a vector of spatial units that contain information on the variable that is to be disaggregated in the attribute table. So within the forest, random forest algorithm, this is the response variable. And this could be something, for example, population count, per administrative unit. On the other hand, the user must also provide raster data sets that provide information which is related to the response variable. And this can be used to predict weights in order to disaggregate it. So in the add-on specifically requires at least one categorical raster. Here we also call it base map. Um, and for example, this could be a land cover map for population mapping, for example. Uh, and there is also the option for the user to provide a second base map. So the user could provide both a land cover and a land use map, for example. And it is also optionally possible for the user to provide a map of continuous values. And this could be, for example, the distance to, to roads. Lastly, the user must also define the desired pixel size for the output weighted grid. Obviously, this pixel size should be coarser than the input base maps, because of course it makes little sense to make predictions at an even finer resolution than the information that is used for prediction. In a second step, the data sets are processed in order to be able to correctly extract the statistics in the third step. 
So I will not go into detail here about this processing, um, but I just want to mention that it's also in this step that a template output grid is created using the user-defined spatial resolution and the spatial coverage of the spatial units provided. In a third step, statistics are calculated both at the level of the spatial units, uh, which you can see here on the left and in the middle. And these are used to train the random forest model. Statistics are also calculated at the level of the output grid. And this is in order to predict weights. So let us first look at the statistics calculated for the raster maps at both scales. So for each input categorical raster, so for example, again, land cover or land use, the proportion of classes present is calculated both at the level of the spatial unit, so the proportion of each land cover in each spatial unit, and this is also calculated for each grid cell of the output grid. And these proportions are calculated using the GRASS GIS our zonal statistics add-on that I mentioned just earlier. It's the other add-on that uh, implements the random forest approach. Um, together, they create the weighted uh, map for decimetric mapping. Um, obviously, for each continuous raster, if it has been included by the user, it is the average that is calculated. Here in the figure, you see only a categorical map but the statistics are calculated for each of the input rasters that are input by these. So these statistics uh, are what is used in the random forest model to predict the response variable. This is what we call the features in the random forest on which the predictions are made. So to train the random forest model, it is also necessary to have known information on the response variable, so on the variable to be predicted. And this is provided in the attributes of the spatial units layer. So here, uh, in fact, within uh, our area create weight, we calculate the log of the density of the variable of interest. So for example, the log of population density. So in fact, uh, the log is used as previous research has suggested that this improves the quality of the weight prediction. Then we get to the random forest model. So these statistics that are calculated at the level of the spatial units are used to train and fit the random forest model. So here we'll have um, to train the model for each spatial unit, the expected value of the response variable, so the expected log population density, for example, and the features, for example, the proportions of land use classes, that can be used to predict these values. Once the random forest model has been trained and fitted, the features or statistics calculated at the grid cell level are input into the model, which can then make predictions on the response variable for each grid cell of the output grid. So obviously here we are still predicting the log of variable density. So these log values are then back transformed to obtain the variable density. So then you would get population density and this produces the final weighted grid. This weighted grid can then be used as an input with the existing GRASS GIS tool I mentioned earlier, V area way, for metric mapping. So to finally disaggregate the variable of interest. So for example, this could be to predict the population count per grid cell. So just a few words on the random forest model. Uh, specifically within our area create weight. So the random forest model is a non-parametric supervised machine learning algorithm, and it's relatively resistant to overfitting and has a strong degree of generalization. So the tool, our area create weight, uses the Python scikit-learn 
machine learning library to implement random forest. So uh, within this, um, the importance of the different features, so the features used for prediction, such as the land cover class proportions, the importance of these features are evaluated. And in our area create weight, by default, the features with little or no importance are removed. There is also the option for users to uh, remove this and keep all the features, no matter their importance. Uh, in addition, um, a range of parameters, a range of random forest parameters are tested and optimized for the model. Now within our area create weight, a range of default parameters are provided, but, but there is the option for more experienced users to alternatively define their own set of parameters to use or to test. And the model itself is assessed using the out of bag accuracy, which is a pseudo independent validation measure known to be reliable to assess model performance. In addition to the output weighted layer, the R area create weight provides a log file providing details on the random forest model. And the tool also provides a graph of feature importances. There is more detail uh, about this in the publication if you are interested. So here, an example on the disaggregation of population count for the city of Ouagadougou. So this data originates from uh, the React and MOP projects. As input layers, the, we have the administrative units that contain population count for each unit. We also have as inputs two base maps, a land cover map at 0.5 meter resolution and a land use map at 5 meter resolution. And these provide the features for the random forest model. So the features to predict weights. And a 100 meter output tile size was specified. Here on the, um, on the bottom, you can see the output weighted grid. Now, this is the result when simply using the default parameters of the R area create weight tool. So with no programming knowledge and very few inputs. So here on the graph on the right, which was also output by R area create weight, we can see the importance of each feature. Here it shows that the land cover class low buildings was the most important in determining the weights. There are, of course, a few methodological considerations to take into account. One aspect to take into account is the spatial coverage of the data sets. So the best practice for a more robust model is for the spatial units to be entirely covered by the ancillary data sets. So firstly, this is because weights can only be predicted for output grid cells where there is a coverage of all data layers. So in this example, there will be no predicted value, for example, in the northeast areas not covered by land cover. Also, in the case that the spatial units are not completely covered, the random forest algorithm may be missing important data for training the model. There can, however, be cases where missing data can be acceptable, but this is up to the user to decide. In this example, uh, in the image here, the aim is to disaggregate population count. So take the large, mainly uncovered administrative unit in the Northeast, uh, which you can see in the red circle. Um, so firstly, weights will only be created for the small covered area in this unit, uh, which means that the population of the whole unit will be redistributed only over the small covered area with weights. Now this, can strongly overestimate population numbers. But in some cases like this one, with expert knowledge, we know that the area not covered actually has sparse or no population, meaning that the population estimates, well, they will approximate what it actually is. Another aspect to keep in mind is that this approach assumes that there is another relationship between the ancillary data and the variable being predicted. And this relationship might not always be so strong. So it's important to think about the data being used. 
Honestly, like with most models, the results obtained depend strongly on the quality of the input data. If you put rubbish in, you will get rubbish out. So finally, there is also the assumption that the relationship between the features and the response variable stays constant, both at the scale of the spatial unit and at the scale of the output grid. But in reality, this is unlikely to be true. And there is some research that shows that different features can be important at different spatial scales. And lastly, it is important to remember that Random Forest is a predictive modeling tool, and it can only provide an approximation of reality. Although this does not mean that the model cannot be useful. As we all know, all models are wrong, but some models are useful. Thank you very much for listening, and I'm happy to take your questions. Thank you, Charlotte. Uh, excellent talking. Uh, we have uh, uh, some questions. I I will put it in the bottom of the screen. Okay. So the first uh, the first question is: What calculation speeds can one expect for the plugin function? Um. That really depends actually it depends on the spatial resolution of the data set you're using that depends on the spatial coverage you're using uh, and it depends on if you are defining your own uh, parameters for random forest it depends on how many parameters you input as well for a light data set it can be quite fast um, Really, yeah, for, for simple data sets, it can take a few minutes if it's uh, very small, but with much more, um, much more dense data sets, it can take hours. It also depends on your processing speed. Uh, there is an option also in the add-on um, to, to use more GPU units if you have them available. And that can speed up as well. So there's really a lot of factors to take into account uh, for the calculation speed. Okay, uh, the second question is, uh, how do you validate and estimate the accuracy of the ML interpolation? It's a very good question. Um, the model itself produces an out of bag error uh, or, or score. And this is how you can have an idea of how well the model is um, predicting uh, the values. Um, th this would need to go into more discussion about a random forest and um, bootstrapping samples and, and um, there's also a grid search algorithm using k-fold k, um, k validation and so there's different steps where the out-of-bag score is calculated and with the final model that is created uh, it's the out-of-bag score as well testing the model using data set, part of the data set that hasn't been used to train it. So, um, to, I, yeah, I, I won't have time, unfortunately, to go into more detail, but feel free to send me uh, an, an email. We can discuss this further. Um, there is one thing to take into account also uh, with the out-of-bag score is that it, the out-of-bag score is for the model that is created, so based on the input data that trains the model. Obviously, as we are predicting at a different spatial scale than the, than the data used to input in the model, this can create, uh, you have to be careful when using the out-of-bag error uh, in when validating the model. Um, but um, so yeah, so that needs to be taken into account, but it's the internal validation of the random forest that uh, produces the accuracy measure. Okay, uh, I think the, the, the next question is, is always the same, but uh, uh, the tool is able to quantify the uncertainty of the final product based on input data. Um, again, this comes back to the out of bag score is the only accuracy measure that is provided by the tool. So if you're looking for some spatial uncertainty, um, then no, there is no other uh, uncertainty or accuracy measures that are included uh, based in the tool. Okay. 
So, Charlotte, uh, thank you for your talking. Uh, we are now in a few minutes to start the second presentation. You have 14 minutes. If you can share a message or, or say something about your presentation or invite the people to know more about your project. Okay. Well, already thank you for being here and listening to me. Um, for the tool, the tool is not currently yet available on GRASTIS, but the, with the next um, release of the next version of GRASTIS, it will be included in the add-ons and online, but currently it's uh, not yet available. And for more information, you can look at the paper that is published uh, in relation to this talk for FOS4G. Um, if you are interested in reading more about it. And then as soon as the tool is uh, published, then I invite you to, to give it a go. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you, Charlotte. Bye. Thank you. Bye. So uh, in a few minutes, we'll start the second presentation. I uh, will be uh, uh, finish some uh, uh, details about the presentation. But in two minutes, we'll start.